Hello and welcome to a quick DIY guide to the use and application of bagging materials. Okay, if you're like me and you're just beginning to, to have the fun of playing around with carbon fiber resin infusion, uh, then you're going to need to know a little bit about how bagging materials work. So I thought I would just make a quick video uh, going over some of the materials that we use, how we make a bag uh, in order to, uh, to vacuum the mold, and all of the little tips and tricks that I've managed to pick up in just the few molds that I've made. Again, uh, this is not for professionals, people who do this all the time. This is just for folks like you and me who are trying this out for the first time in their garage. Okay, so if you've never used tacky tape before, then this is the material that when you first get it, it's going to be kind of a, a bit of an adventure. So it's extremely sticky. It always comes on a roll. It's almost always shipped flat, or at least within something that'll hold it straight. Don't let it sit over at the edge of a counter. It'll droop on you. And it's extremely sticky. So it's got a wax paper back and you apply it to the mold surface in order to adhere the vacuum material into your bag. Okay, so as we get going applying that tacky tape, we're going to want to make some pleats. The idea with pleats is that you're trying to match the perimeter of your mold to this really much larger perimeter of your bagging materials. All right, so there's no randomness in the creation of a pleat. The pleats have to be actually, you have to think your way around every single mold. You have to know where you need excess bag material and you have to apply the pleats appropriately in those areas in order to get the bag to adequately conform to the contours of the mold. Okay, so I'm going to make the assumption that the carbon fiber materials are already placed in the mold. So here I'm making an outer door skin for my car project. And you see as I go around with the tacky tape, I'm breaking the tape. I'm tearing it at the corners so that I can easily manipulate it around the corners. Uh, then I take little pieces of remnant tape and cover over those exposed corners so that when I'm applying the rest of the bagging material, so here's a little bit of peel ply going in, that's the next layer, that you know, the glues and other things that I spray are not getting on that bagging uh, tape material. Okay, so that uh, the peel ply goes in, then the flow mesh. Now as I'm applying each one of these layers, I'm carefully tailoring them to the mold. And I always start with way too much uh, of the flow mesh and then I just just trim it down and trim it down to wherever I sort of think it's going to need to go. Now I infused this particular mold uh, along its length, okay, so going from the right hand side to the left hand side of the screen. A little bit of hot melt glue holds the spiral feed line in place and then I'm doing the same thing with the vacuum line on the other side. So once that's all done, the last layer of the bagging material that's going in is is the bag itself. So this is uh, this is AirTech um, uh, AirTech product Stretch Lawn 800 is the name of it, and we get putting it in. Now this is wide wide material, and you need a bag at least at least 20 to 30 percent larger. And this is just a door panel; it's reasonably flat. Uh, but I start with adhering the corners of the mold, and we'll show you this again. And as I I'll give you a couple examples here, and because of the nature of this mold, because of the way that the shape runs, I'm just gathering up the on that long bottom edge I'm just gathering up the material and again making the, uh, the the length or the area of the bag match the area of the mold. Now I know where I need to uh, add some extra pleats so the door panel actually curves up uh, as it reaches the window aperture. So I'm going to need to uh, allow the bag to conform in that area and sort of curve and, and make its way up neatly. Uh, you also just, as you're doing it, so just think about being even with the pleats in terms of their size. Even if your sh the shape of your mold is a little irregular, so on this edge again, I don't need a ton of pleats. Just putting them in relatively regularly, but I do have a, a kick point right about where I'm working right now. Okay, so that's where it bends up. So I'm adding an extra pleat in there, so the bag can easily conform. Now uh, the uh, insertion of pleats also is is how you control pressure, and here I'm just showing you how to close the pleat off. 
All right, so we're, we're coming in, we've got the area matched, and it's always that last pleat. So I'm just sort of testing the bag as I go along. Okay, I've still got some slack, and how much do I need? All right, and then, uh, all right, so we're working our way over the, the feed lines there. And then as I make my way into the last uh, uh, pleat that I'm putting in, I do it in the other direction. So I change the direction of the pleat. All right, so that I can lay the bag back on itself and be sure that I get it to close nicely. I'm gonna show you this a couple more times because it's kind of tricky. So this is the, uh, I was working on my intake plenum in carbon fiber. You can see how massive that bag is compared to the size of the mold. So I'm going to need some very large pleats in order to get this bag to seal down. So look at the size of those. So I've sort of roughly computed what it is that I'm going to need there. I'm not measuring it or anything. Start at the corners, tape the corners up, reveal a little bit of the area. I've decided on three big pleats to get the bag into this very deep drawn mold. And then that last pleat again is going in in the reverse direction so I can make sure that I pull all the slack out of the bag and I end up with a nicely sealed bag. I get asked this one all the time. Uh, it's really tricky to get these bags uh, to seal. So I actually have had really good luck, mostly because uh, other folk have helped me out with my bagging technique uh, in trying to make sure that my bags pretty much seal on their first pull. Like there might be a pinhole leak here and there, and those leaks are almost always on the inlets or the outlets. So where the vacuum is being applied or the resin is being drawn into the mold. Those are the primary leak areas. If you're really careful, see, watch how carefully I'm applying this. I normally do this in stop motion, but I, I did have this footage to show. So I thought I'd, I'd put it out there for you. Uh, it takes a, a long time. So when you're watching it in stop motion, you think, oh, well, these pleats just take a second. And most of the other videos that I've watched, really, uh, they just say, you know, throw some pleats in. Uh, don't just throw some pleats in. <laughs> this example, I'm working on my carbon fiber hood mold. Uh, one of the first molds I did. So I'm being very careful, right? So leaving the tape on until I need it, pulling the tape back just a little bit, laying the pleat in very carefully onto the uh, the tape that was applied to the perimeter of the mold, then letting it lie back down over the tape that's already there. Again, anyone who's done this a million times will be like, oh, boring, I'm going on to the next video. Yeah, but if you've never done it once, you know, where is it going to leak? Well, it's going to leak right there at the bottom, right? Right where the two things intersect. And then I carefully apply that tape up the mold. Now, in this case, because the shape of the mold is what it is, I, I just ran the material up the, uh, up, up the bagging material itself, up the plastic. Um, and that's not the way I, I do that now. I try to make my molds more square so that I can just lay the material down flat. Uh, the bagging material, and then and then apply the then the tape applies a little bit more square. So I'm checking for square there, All right? So I've made my pleat with everything taped up. Then I'm going to unfold that, pull the backing off the tape. I've already sort of preformed where the 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 join is, right? Where the fold is, and it's really helpful. Now, when I was doing this, it was also winter time, uh, and I do live in Canada, so the bagging material. Actually, if it's warm, it just works so much better. So it was not warm when I was doing this. Uh, so it's a lot more crinkly and a lot more difficult to work with. Uh, molds I made in the summertime uh, have the bagging material just, it's so much more flexible when it's a little bit warm. Um, anyway, so in that pleat goes, and I press down really carefully up the sides of the pleat, right? And then I'm going to work my way uh, down the length of the mold to finish the job. Okay, so one more time, this time back on the flat. So I'm carefully pressing down uh, the bag material into the tacky tape that's on the perimeter of the mold. So we've got, got nice, this is the way that you get it leak free right at the start, right? You can't, you can't miss a single detail. Now watch here as we then insert the pleat. So that pleat, once again, just a little bit folded back on itself. And then this is the way I do it if I've got a straight run. So if the, if the mold and the bag just need to, you know, again, lose the, lose the perimeter but it's straight so I just fold that bag get it straight 
and then carefully apply it and I press it right back down onto that mold surface. That ensures that that bag is going to fold up and stay square. It's important. And then I always, always, always press that root, get that intersection between the two um, so that it's nice and tightly sealed down there. That's where you'll get leaks. All right, so then I keep straightening and adjusting the bag as I'm going. All right, now I'm going to unfold it, pull that backing tape off. All right, I've already pre-made that pleat, so we know where it's going to fold and bend. Again, it's super sticky, right? So if you're not paying close attention, you'll end up with a heck of a mess. All right, and then in it goes. All right, and then we get it, the root sealed. All right, and then I'm just going to pinch up the sides, right, of that pleat all the way up to the top. You usually sort of double double pinch the tops. Uh, I get very few leaks on these pleats. Again, I'm going slowly, but you know, we're, I, I normally run this in stop motion and I don't take you through this particular detail. But I think you know, if you're about to make your first mold, this is the part that's nerve wracking, right? You've got all that material. You could have, you know, this is a hood that I'm making here. You could have $600 worth of uh, material dry in that mold and a day worth of time to lay up the mold. So taking your time here is really worth the effort, right? So I'm just laying out my final pleats, just checking with the bag. Okay, I need a pleat in, a, in various locations, uh, just testing out where it is I would put that pleat and then uh, getting an estimate for the size of the pleat. I sort of prefer about a 150 millimeter six inch pleat seems to work best. I don't mind a few more pleats if needed. Uh, and then again, straighten the material out, remove the backing tape and continue the process and you'll have leak free molds. Uh, just again, the leaking molds, if they will not hold the vacuum for 24 hours, at least depending on your infusion resin, do not infuse them. Right, you need to find the leak. There's no such thing as not finding the leak. I mean, I guess you could probably get away with it, and from time to time, I've had, you know, something tiny that's that's worked, uh, but it's generally pretty bad practice. So just try to get your. It's real. It's not easy. It's again, when I watch the videos from everybody else, it's just I oh, yeah, throw the pleats in, throw the bagging material, and oh, everything's fine. I I've spent hours and hours and hours making sure that my layups are with the bagging materials are accurately done. Uh, it's it, it takes a lot of time. It just takes a lot of time. All right, so that's let's move on. Okay, so just one last go around on how to seal up uh, any one of the sides for the perimeter of the bag. Again, you can hear how crunchy that film is. So we've worked, in essence, we've laid out each one of those pleats going from right to left. And there I've just inserted the last pleat and I've made sure that the pleat can pull the bag tight down onto that, that last little bit of perimeter there. And as soon as I'm happy with that, then I just sort of sneak into it, right? So I've pulled off the last of the, of the backing for the tacky tape, I've got it all the way into the corner. Now I'm gonna pull the, uh, the tape off of the pleat and then you've got to make sure when you do this last little bit of sealing, sorry for the camera angle, you're going to watch it through my armpit. And, uh, there we go. So now I can pull that bag down and then I pull all the excess bag up the pleat and that gives me a perfect seal along the edge. Uh, the first time I ever did this, that little trick would have saved so much time. Okay, just so to wrap it up, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, watching the video all the way to the end. Uh, I hope it's been of some use. So if you've never done any sort of vacuum infusion uh, to make carbon fiber parts before, and you just simply wanted to have a look in and learn, I hope this video has been of, of help. If it has been helpful for you, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'll add plenty more content uh, going forward into the future. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. We'll catch you on the next video.